On July 20th, 1969, humans walked on the surface of the moon for the very first time. Black and white images of the moon's surface flashed on television screens everywhere. The whole world was watching. Let's journey back to that time for a first-hand account of that historic event. This is Daniel reporting live from the Mission Control Center in Houston. As you know, four days ago on July 16th, the Apollo mission left off, left, lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The three astronauts on board had traveled 240,000 miles or 400,000 kilometers to the moon. In just minutes, they will approach the first moon landing. The spacecraft has separated into two parts, the common module Columbia and the Lunar Module Eagle. Columbia is piloted by Mike Collins. It will orbit the moon while Eagle pilot by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin makes the historical landing. Let's go to Pete Brooks in the studio for a historical prep. For years, Pete, the United States competed with Russia to have the best space program. It all started on October 4th, 1957, when the Russians launched Sputnik, the first satellite. Then on April 12th, 1961, Yuri Gagarin, the Soviet cosmonaut, <coughs> became the first person in space. Americans were taken by surprise? Absolutely, they felt defeated. In 1961, the President Kennedy challenged the U.S. to put a person on the moon by 1970, and today the world is witnessing our efforts to fulfill that challenge. Thank you, Dr. Carter. And now let's go back to Mission Control and Jane Wilson. Jane, are you there? Hi, MP. The, the command center at Houston is a huge room filled with workstations. At many of these stations, Mission Control experts monitor and Never seen so many computers in one place. If you think these are impressive, you should see the Columbia command module. That's where your dad is now. Behind the command module is a service module. That's the part of the ship that holds fuel, oxygen, and navigation equipment. We're really proud of our dad. Would you like to speak to him now? We have the Columbia on our radio. Here, say hello. Hi, Dad. Hi, dad. I wish we had a telescope that, let, that could let us see him. Pushed off the ground on a jet of 
superheat jet. The second stage needed less than half the power because the rocket was lighter after all the fuel burned up. The third stage was the smallest, even though it carried the astronauts the farthest. But if there's no air to push against in space, how does the rocket move forward? Good question. That's Newton's second law of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. When the exhaust gases leave the rocket, they push back and the rocket moves forward. On liftoff, the force of the exhaust gases moving down propels the rocket, propels the rocket in the opposite direction of with the same force. Dad, are you still there? What did it feel like during liftoff? We were three miles away and we felt the great ground shake. It splashed us in our seats until we were buried in energy. Or gravitational forces. Right now, man, you feel blended. Mm -hmm. On the lift up, we feel free. It was like beginning at the bottom of the curve of the roller coaster. Cool. You need all that force that lift up because the rocket is so heavy. But it's weight almost nothing in space, right? If you didn't want to, we could push the ship with his hands. That that's pretty amazing, isn't it, Amanda? Mom, can you say buzz and nails won't break much on the moon? Yes, I did, Amanda. Your mom's right. Another one of Newton's laws says that gravity attracts all masses to one another, and the greater the mass, the greater the gravity. The moon's mass is about 20 the mass of Earth. Its gravity is about one sixth the gravity of on Earth, the two astronauts who will walk the moon these weigh 360 pounds, but they're safe to jump. On the moon, they will weigh only 60. I'm sorry, but I have to interrupt you now. We have the lunar module on the line. Dio, what is your status? We're approaching the landing site. It looks pretty rocky. I'll keep moving to see if I can find a smoother spot. This is Jane Wilson reporting. For those of you who just joined us, we are here live at the Mission Control Center in Houston. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are about to touch down on the moon in the long run module. In just moments, if all goes well, the, they will step into the vacuum of space, relying on their spacesuits to protect them from the harsh, harsh conditions. In, in case you are wondering, the moon can be a scorching 243 degrees Fahrenheit during the, lun the lunar day and a frigid 279 degrees below zero for midget during the lunar nights. Eagle, this is Mission Control. You'll have to set down so soon. You're, you're low on fuel. Roger, Mission Control, we found a landing spot. What happens if we crash? The Eagle is moving very slowly. A crash would probably only break the legs. The section with the legs remains on the moon after liftoff. There's absolutely, there's absolute quiet here, quiet here at the Mission Control Center as everyone waits. Mission, mission Control, this is <coughs> Landing base here, the eagle has landed. There you have it, the eagle has landed. Those are the words of Neil Armstrong, the first words spoken from the moon. The Lonro module has just la landed on the sea of the trans Tranquility, one of the dark areas on the moon that is visible from Earth. The astronauts will now approach their life support units for the first Hey, baby. The life support zeros have oxygen tanks, water, and all the radio equipment and big backups. I know, and that's why I mean, this fish ship caught more than one million people. The sun filters on their helmets made of gold are, are made of gold foil. On the earth, the atmosphere blocks most of the sun rays, but on the moon, the sun will burn your skin in a few seconds. The spacesuits also keep the astronauts at the right temperature. You've been teaching them everything, haven't you, Mrs. Collins? Well, this is one of the greatest presenters.
I'm almost I'm almost ready to open the hatch now. I'm talking about the camera and turning it on. What you now see on your television screen is a live footage from the land. The oars jumped the last three feet off to the ground. We had to make the ladder short to, to save on weight. cautiously down the ladder, hopped off the end, and landed on the surface of the moon. He said, That's one small step for a man, one great leap for mankind.